Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're going to take a look at why I can never own practical cars. For those of you who have followed my channel at all, you know that I have an allergy to practical cars and I've had a practical car for a little while in the fleet, which was my 2016 Mercedes CLA 250. Now that little all-wheel drive Mercedes was my very practical all-weather car, as well as being the car that I drove when all my other cars were down and out. As you can guess, it is no longer with us, and in its place, a 2004 Dodge Viper SRT10. Now this car was a pretty good buy. It only had 15,000 miles on it, obviously is in one of the best colors for Vipers, and is in immaculate condition with no modifications. Now, obviously, Trying to justify a Viper as a practical car is a serious stretch, but I'm gonna do it anyway. First off, this is a V10 that is actually maintainable in my shop. It's not something that I need crazy exotic tools for and is known for lots of problems. It's actually quite reliable. Number two, it's a Dodge. Dodges are Dodges? I mean, they're not great, but they definitely don't break all the time. And number three, this car comes with 500 horsepower, so I probably will be able to leave it alone for a little while without wanting more power out of it. Now, because this car is so clean, I really don't want to ruin it, but there are some modifications I'm probably going to make to it. Before I dive too far into that, I'm sure there's a lot of people who would like to see me drive the car and get my driving impressions, but this is what the weather's like when I just went to pick it up. Well, they're delivering the car in the middle of a monsoon, so first drive in the brand new Viper will be basically in hellish conditions. Why does it seem like every car I buy, I always have to drive it home in a blizzard or a monsoon? I don't seem to ever get to drive my cars home in nice weather. Oh, hydroplane city. <laughs> All right. Maybe people weren't overstating how badly these things hydroplane. Yeah, so after driving back from a monsoon, the car is dirty and I'm not going back out. So instead, we're going to look at the car here in the shop. Looking around the outside of the car, you can tell that it was really well cared for. There's very little damage, the car has very little wear and tear, the paint's in great condition, the wheels are in great condition. Overall, I want to preserve this car, but there's a lot of things that are just sort of dated with it, and a lot of things I just like to personalize that hopefully can be done without doing permanent damage to the car. Starting at the front of the car, you can see the front of the end is a little softened. It's a little too round, the headlights are a little too soft. It's not as aggressive as early or later Vipers. Now, I want to do some changes to this, but since I don't want to destroy the car, I can't replace the front bumper entirely. So the next best option is to add a splitter under the front of the car to try to give it more attitude and also try to give it a little bit more aerodynamic effect to improve the performance. Additionally, I can add something like an off-center rally stripe in vinyl that will give me the ability to change the look radically without actually making a permanent change to the body of the car. Moving back a little bit, the next thing that I'm definitely going to be replacing are the wheels. There's two reasons for this. One, the wheels that are on this car are chrome, and chrome makes every car look old. It doesn't matter if it's a Corvette, a Cadillac, or a Mustang. It looks old with chrome, and you can fight me on that. Now, this car in particular would look really good with some satin black wheels with some, uh, like a high gloss barrel to the wheel. In my, keeping that in mind, I'll probably call someone like CCW or something who make custom wheels to try to get a slightly different fitment as well. 
the current wheel size and setup only lends itself to one manufacturer of road tires, and that's Michelin. I don't like being dependent on a single manufacturer for all of my tire options, especially if they decide to stop making them at some point. So if I can find a size of wheel that's really close, but allows me to have the flexibility of a lot more options, I'm going to go that route. When we get to the back of the car, it's actually not that bad of a looking car. Um, the bumper, I don't like the fact that it actually says Dodge Viper in raised letters, like some sort of Intrepid or Avenger or something from back in the day. But the shape is actually pretty nice. I think I'll probably look at putting a small spoiler on here like the coupes have to give it a little bit more of that coupe look. And then also possibly put something like a real dark license plate frame or insert in the license plate area to help break up all of the red of the trunk. Other than this, everything else I want to do is mostly inside the car. Now inside the interior here, the biggest things I don't like are the steering wheel. It's way too blocky, chunky, and just looks very 2000s. It's mostly the airbag's fault. So if I can find another more racing style steering wheel, I'd much rather have that taken off and put on the shelf because I don't like having an airbag blow up in my face. Additionally, the shift knob is way too disproportionately large and only caters itself to people who top shift, which I don't like. I prefer to have more of a racing style shift knob, so I will probably pull this out and set it aside to save it from the wear and tear. And right now it's turned around facing backwards, which means I probably need to take it off anyway to actually correct the orientation. I have already tried unscrewing it with the shift boot in place, and no matter which way you start threading it back on, it's always backwards. So it's gotta be a jam nut problem or something underneath the boot. Now, I will also probably consider replacing the stereo. But if I've learned one lesson in cars, replacing stereos almost always makes the car worse. Your wiring changes when you replace a stereo become a nightmare when you need to then fix them later, in the, later on when that stereo is no longer as modern as it was. And no matter how nice of a stereo you buy, it's always outdated within a year or two. In this case, I really probably wouldn't want to have to cut apart the dash to put a stereo in. So what I'll do is I'll actually leave the factory head unit and put a hidden in-dash stereo that has Bluetooth capacities and more modern features that I can then override the sound system with. So if I want to, I can connect to that and use that system or use the factory system and have them both working at the same time. Now, other than that, the one other change I will almost certainly be making is exhaust. The exhaust on this car makes the side sills incredibly hot and makes the car sound somewhat like a leaf blower. I don't know what Dodge was thinking about uh, when they designed this, other than they probably designed it, thought it was cool, and then some sort of accountant came along and told them they either needed to save money or meet some sort of legal requirement, and so they had to change it up at the last minute. I'll replace this with a freer flowing aftermarket exhaust, which will cut the temperatures way down and also help the sound significantly. At the end of the day, I have no intention of ever getting rid of this car. This is a car I intend to add to my collection and keep forever, which is my general goal at this point, is to add cars that I really want and stop churning through cars just to try them out. I am going to try to make everything I do to this car reversible only for the fact that I know you should always plan for something that you don't intend to happen. And if that's the sale of this car, I'm going to plan for it. Now, ultimately, if this car sticks around as intended, you'll see it on many, many more videos coming up where I'll do deep dives into what modifications I'm doing and why, my personal impressions of the driving characteristics and improvements to the car, as well as just my general thoughts on this type of vehicle. If you have any ideas for specific videos you'd like to see, or if you have any questions about this car, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.